Chapter One of Fairy Stories My Children Love Best of All. Chapter One, The Bears Make a Visit. I don't think it was quite fair for Silverhair to eat up the little bear's supper and break down his chair. Do you? Exclaimed Teddy Ranger. Well, I do think it was pretty hard on the little bear, Teddy, said the teacher, and I shouldn't wonder a bit if he got even with her afterward. In fact, I believe there's another part to this story, only it isn't in the book. Do you know it? Do you know it? exclaimed half a dozen voices. I believe I do know a little of it, she said. By this time, every child in the room was on the alert, and several had crowded around her. You see, the little bear felt very unhappy that night. He had no supper, for, as you know, Silverhair had eaten his all up. Of course, the great bear and the middle-sized bear offered him some of their porridge, but he didn't like it any better than Silverhair did, so he had to make out as best he could with a crust of bread. Then, too, he had nothing to sit down on, for Silverhair had broken the bottom out of his chair. So he had to stand on his hind legs all the time he was eating, and that, of course, wasn't very pleasant. All at once, he broke out with a queer little growl. I say, let us watch our chance to get into Silverhair's house when she's away, and let us eat her supper and break down her chair, and see how she will like it. The great bear patted him on the head with his huge brown paw, and said, This is a bright little cub of ours. And the middle-sized bear added, He will be a great bear some day. Then they put their heads together, and decided that the very next morning, they would hunt for Silverhair's house, and get in if they could, and pay her back for all the mischief she had done. The little bear dreamed about it all night, sleeping in the bed where Silverhair had taken her nap, and as soon as they had eaten their breakfast the next morning, off they went. It was afternoon before they found the house, a little brown cottage on the edge of the woods. But they knew it was the right one, for there was Silverhair herself, climbing a tree to peep into a woodpecker's nest. The door was open, and they could have rushed in as well as not, but they saw Silverhair's mother sitting by the window, and they were afraid they might disturb her. So they crept back into the bushes and waited, in hopes that she would go away. And sure enough, just as the sun was going down, and the bears were getting hungry, Silverhair's mother came out of the house with her bonnet on. Come, Silverhair, she said. It is almost time for supper. Let us go and call your father home. Then she shut the door behind her and the two walked off together. But they never thought to put the windows down, and one of them was left wide open. Now's our chance, cried the three bears, and they scrambled out of the bushes and ran to the house as fast as ever they could. I'm half starved, cried the great bear as he climbed in at the window. I hope they have something nice for supper. A good fat sheep or a fine large deer would suit me. Or a couple of tender young calves, said the middle-sized bear. We won't leave a bone for silver hair. Here's the supper already now, cried the little bear, and he pushed a door open into a room where there was a table set for three. It was not at all the kind of a supper they wanted, and the faces of the old bears fell. But there was a dish of custard on the table that looked a little like porridge, and they thought they could eat that at least. The great bear and the middle-sized bear stuck their noses in together, but they pulled them out again the next minute. It is too sweet, said the great bear with a discontented grunt. It is too sour, said the middle-sized bear with another grunt. It is just right cried the little bear, and he ate it all up in a minute. Then they noticed a plate of buns and decided to try how these would taste. But the great bear threw his on the floor after taking a single bite. These are worse seasoned than the porridge, he growled. And the middle-sized bear added, They're not well baked either. The crust doesn't go halfway through. They are just right, said the little bear again and he ate every one without stopping. Let us get out of this place, growled the two old bears. There is nothing here that we want. We must find Silverhair's chair first, 
said the little bear, and he led the way into another room, which was the strangest place they had ever seen. The floor felt like moss under their feet, and there were chairs of all sorts, straight chairs and rocking chairs, stuffed chairs and willow chairs. The great bear sat down in the biggest chair of all, but he jumped up again with a very wry face. That is a dreadful chair, he growled. It makes me sick to go swinging back and forth like that. The middle-sized bear sat down in a stuffed sleepy hollow, but she too jumped up again in a hurry. Dear me, she howled. I thought I was going clear through. The little bear climbed into a beautiful red high chair, and it suited him exactly. It is the best chair of all, he said, leaning back. I guess I will take it to pay for the one silver hair broke. At that very instant, what should they hear but a sound of steps coming into the house, and in another moment there was a clamor of voices from the room where the table was set. Somebody has been here and eaten up all our supper, they all cried together. Then a great voice roared, Thieves! Thieves! And a middle-sized voice screamed, Tramps! Tramps! And a wee small voice cried, The bears! The bears! The last was the voice of Silverhair herself, and there she stood in the doorway, looking right straight at them. The bears did not wait to hear any more, but jumped out of the window and made off as fast as they could. The little bear was last, climbing out with Silverhair's chair in his arms. But when he heard the great voice say something about a gun, he dropped the chair and got down on all fours. As it dropped, he was sure he heard something break, but he had no time to stop and look. He ran for dear life, and none of the three stopped till they were all safe in their den. The children drew a long breath. Teddy Ranger found his voice first. Well, he said, I guess the bears didn't go back to that house again very soon. And I guess Silverhair didn't want to go to their house either, said a sweet little girl who was leaning on the teacher's lap. No, laughed the storyteller. I guess they all thought it would be better to stay in their own places and not meddle with other people's things. End of chapter 1